What's up mathematicians? Justin here. Welcome back to our unit on tiling. This will be lesson number two about tiling the plane. So yeah, it's about tiling. Uh, before we get into the lesson, uh, let's make sure we all understand what it means for a, a polygon to tile the plane. Okay, so the word we use, tiling, comes from the fact that actual tiles can be used to cover as much floor space or wall space as you'd like if they're made in a certain shape or in some cases like this one multiple shapes um, that tile so an example of this right here is this tiling which i've seen uh in bathrooms of uh, quite a few older houses actually this tiling that you can see is made of squares and regular octagons and this demonstrates the two conditions that must be met for a shape or set of multiple shapes together to tile. Okay, so the first condition is this. All the tiles must fit together with no gaps and no overlapping, right? We don't want any spaces or gaps and we don't want the tiles to overlap on top of each other. The second condition is this. Uh, we want to be able to cover as much of the surface as we want. So if we had a floor that was, you know, miles and miles long, we want to be able to cover the entire surface with these tiles, okay? And so if we look at this picture, it seems pretty clear that this tiling could keep going on and on indefinitely, cover as much space as we might want it to. Um, okay, and one other thing I'll mention is that in this lesson, the next few lessons, we'll be looking at tilings of just one shape. Now, this is a tiling with two different shapes, okay? And you can have tilings with many different shapes, but we're going to be focusing on tilings with made of, of just one shape, okay? Uh, now, before we explore which regular polygons can do this, can tile a plane or a surface, uh, there are two things that I think that you will find very helpful. So the first thing is this table right here, which actually comes from one of the practice exercises from the previous lesson, from lesson one. I believe this was exercise number two that asked you to make this table. And uh, it's a table of regular polygons where we see in the first column, we have the name of the regular polygon. Uh, the next column, the number of sides that the regular polygon has. The next column, the angle sum of the polygon, and the final column is the interior angle measure of each angle in the regular polygon. So for an equilateral triangle, we have three sides, angle sum of 180 degrees, as any triangle does, and each interior angle measure is 60 degrees, right? 180 divided by three angles gives us 60 degrees. And for a regular tetragon, which is a square, remember what a tetragon is? Uh, of course, there are four sides, angle sum of 360, and each angle is 90 degrees. And we see that continued on with pentagon, uh, hexagon, and I didn't make the whole table here because I don't want you to miss out on the fun of doing it yourself, uh, but I asked you to go all the way up to, well, I asked you to do the first 10 rows, which would actually go all the way up to the 12th gone which is also called a dodecagon. So if you don't have this table, if you didn't do it from the uh, exercises from lesson number one, go ahead and pause the video and put this table in your notes, okay? Um, you can see the first few entries right here to get you started, uh, but go ahead and fill it out all the way up to the 12 gone or the dodecagon. The second thing that will be helpful here is a reminder of how many degrees are in a full turn. So if you recall in our definition of angle from our axiomatic system, we know that a straight angle, which for example, if we have a point on a line, a straight angle would be this angle right here. We know that the magnitude, the measure of a straight angle is 180 degrees. Well, if we look at this line, we see from the perspective of this point, we have a straight angle on the top and we have another straight angle on the bottom because it is in fact a line. And so there we have another 180 degrees. Okay, so what is the angle measure of a full turn? If I were to start 
here, go all the way around and come back here. A full turn, of course, is 180 degrees plus 180 degrees, right? So the full turn is 360 degrees, okay? So that is also going to be useful in, uh, in figuring out some of the things for this lesson. Okay, so at this point, I'd actually like you to go and play around uh, and see what you can discover. See if you can determine which regular polygons can tile the plane by themselves, right? So we're not talking about mixing up, say, triangles and squares. It's like only triangles or only squares or only uh, pentagons or, or whatever, okay? So play around, see if you can figure out which polygons can do that. Cover as much space as you want where they fit together with no gaps and do not overlap. Keep this table in front of you and play around with the different shapes until you feel you've discovered all the ones that do tile. Once you've done this, once you think you've figured out all the ones that tile, uh, prove that regular pentagons cannot tile the plane. Okay? And then try to prove that you have actually discovered all the ones that do tile. Prove that you are done. There are no more that will tile. Okay? So once you've done these things, and I'll put them right here. So number one, determine all regular polygons that can tile the plane. Uh, prove that the pentagon does not tile the plane. And finally, prove that you are done, right? So this thing that you did up here, make a, come up with a proof that you have in fact found all the regular polygons that work, okay? Uh, once you've done those things, go ahead and uh, watch the next video. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here and uh, once you've done these things, go ahead and watch the next video and, you know, we'll talk about which polygons do tile. Uh, remember to use the table and also one thing that sometimes students find helpful is to print off and to cut out regular polygons or if you have, if you happen to have tiles like out of wood or something like that, but they have to be regular polygons, right? Actually playing around with them can be really useful. So I'll put in the description and on the website a printout where you can cut out some different regular polygons, try to fit them together, try to make them with, uh, try to make them tile. Playing around with physical objects is a great way for you to build up your understandings and your intuitions, okay? So that will wrap up this video. In the next video, we'll look at which regular polygons tile and how we can prove that those are the only ones. We'll see you then.